All right, here we go. We are rolling. Happy Sunday, Tampa Bay. We're with you for another week here on the Duncan Duo Real Estate Show to talk about the Tampa Bay real estate market like we are every Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, I am stoked to be back in Tampa. Last week, I uh, recorded my show from New York City. Uh, I was out there at a real estate conference with the founder of LPT Realty, Robert Palmer, talking uh, to some teams in different parts of the country about coming over to LPT. Uh, and then Robert uh, you know, went over to Wall Street to get an update on what an IPO looks like for LPT Realty. So it's exciting times happening with LPT. It was a cool trip. Got to see some longtime friends and talk to people about LPT. And if you are interested in joining LPT, Go to jointheduo.com. Again, that's jointheduo. You can click to have a private consultation with me about LPT or my team. And if you're a real estate agent, you can also go to doovermovement.com where you'll get real estate educational tips for me every couple of weeks with videos, different things I'm doing in my business. One of the things I recently put out on there was my listing presentation. So uh, I I believe in sharing and collaboration. So if you're interested in my listing presentation and what we do with home sellers, uh, you can go get that at doovermovement.com. So anyway, when we aren't on air, make sure to follow us on all of our socials at The Duncan Duo, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Again, at The Duncan Duo. So real estate makes the list of America's most envied jobs. This is kind of interesting. So I, I'm going to go down a little bunny trail here because I also saw an article not long ago that said real estate agents were in like the top 10 of least trusted professions out there. Um, so so I find it interesting that we are, while we're envied, we're also not trusted. Um, but uh, the, the, the reason I think that uh, real estate agents get this stigma as a job that's envied uh, is a lot of like fake social media stuff. Um, you know, I know so many real estate agents on social media that are uh, propping up what they're doing or what they're accomplishing or posting properties that their firm sold that they didn't really sell, they didn't get paid on. And so there's this stigma that real estate agents make, you know, gobs and gobs of money. And certainly uh, I've done very well, you know, for myself. Certainly there are real estate agents that do very well that it, that have created wealth. Uh, however, there are way more of them not creating that wealth than there are the ones that are. Uh, the average income last year for real estate agent was in the 30s, uh, 30,000 range. So that was the average. Um, certainly there are outliers and people making, um, you know, millions of dollars and then there are some making none. Um, but, but the reality is, is that the public now perceives real estate agents as this celebrity type thing because of reality TV, HGTV, Bravo, all these shows that are that follow around real estate agents. I had a buddy this week um you know send me a text um and and the text was basically like, you know, kind of the celebritizing of real estate agents from reality TV shows. And um you know, it's interesting you look up some of the reality real estate people uh, and there are some that are crushing it, but there are a lot that really aren't. You look up their sales and are like, they must be getting paid for this TV show because they're not really selling that much real estate. So real estate agents are envied, but I think it's because this public ha- the public has this perception that every single real estate agent gets into the business and just makes it rain and makes all kinds of money because there's a lot of fakeness on social media um, or there are outliers, you know, that, you know, like myself, look, of course I drive exotic cars and I live in a great house and I've done very well, but I've been in the industry for 20 years. So the idea that you can just walk right in and do that, it isn't the norm. So, um, anyway, the, the interesting thing is, is that, um, you know, this article, um, you know, basically puts luxury real estate agents operating in a realm where opulence and dreams converge. So a professional luxury real estate agent was most coveted among survey respondents in states such as Connecticut and Delaware, the most envied jobs in America. So luxury real estate agent came in number four. Um, the others were wildlife photographer, chocolatier. Man, I would be a real fat dude if I was a chocolatier. I would just be eating it all day long. Adventure tour guide, uh, vineyard manager, craft brewer, social media influencer, which a lot of real estate agents think that they are, environmental scientist, video game developer, cheese artist, a marine biologist, fashion designer, TV anchor, aerospace engineer, web designer, magazine editor, and an entertainment lawyer. So, 
Um, again, the the norm in real estate is not making millions of dollars. The norm is grinding for years and years and years before you finally build up a business to make a great income. You sacrifice for years. My first year, I sold one house, um, and and that was to my parents. So it really shouldn't count. So the the reality is that way too many people think that getting into real estate is easy and they're going to make it rain and unfortunately the ease of entry into real estate causes a lot of people to get in and the failure rate to be massively high so do not think just because you see um you know one agent being successful on Instagram or a TV show that that is the norm there are millions of real estate agents that didn't sell a house this year millions that didn't sell a single home so the barrier of entry is easy. Uh, that does not mean that you can't be successful in real estate. Clearly, I'm an example of that. I think the agent's on my team. And if you have the right work ethic um, and you're willing to grind and not expecting to just show up and have money rain from the ceiling, then it's the place for you. And we'd love the opportunity to talk to you if that is the case for you. Again, join the duo.com if you want to have a built blueprint for success, a roadmap to help you be a successful real estate agent. Again, you can join our team or LPT Realty with me as your sponsor by going to jointheduo.com. But yeah, I, I just find it wild. Um, reality TV, some of them are my friends, and, and I have to tell you, so much of it is staged and fake. You watch those shows and you think, man, that looks like such an amazing life. It's a TV show. What do you expect? Like That is not really the way that, um, that, that things happen. So uh, new home sales are climbing. Builder incentives uh, continue to pay off where builders are buying rates down, paying incentives. The median sales price of a new home was 430700 in March compared to a little lower than 400000 for uh, resale homes. About 22% of builders say they cut prices in April with an average reduction of 6%. Uh, home prices, mortgage rates are high, but prices have been rising a little slowly. But builders have figured it out. The, the thing that is holding people back from purchasing right now is not the price as much as it is the payment. People rarely buy real estate for the price. They they buy for the payment. So with interest rates above 7% on a 30-year fixed, um, there, there are obstacles for a lot of people looking at trying to qualify or being comfortable spending and buying a home in that price range. Whereas, you know, a few years ago, we saw rates in the twos and threes. So the, the builders smartly have figured out and, and a lot of resale home sellers and agents have figured it out too, that the interest rate buy down and incentives to get your payment lower for a period of time. Uh, is what what is driving people. So that's what builders have been doing. Uh, it's why a lot of people are flocking to new construction. There's certainly the risk that that extra cost of those buy downs is inflating the price of the home and thus, uh, you know, could cause problems exiting uh, if you have to exit quickly. But with prices rising at five to seven percent, uh, as long as you're not wanting to exit the property in a year or two, you should be in pretty good shape, even if the price is slightly inflated because of the incentives you get to lower the price to get you into the property. So hopefully that makes sense. I just shot a video, and this is on our YouTube channel if you want to watch it, and I go over the pros and cons of buying a new construction home. You hear a lot about the pros, but you don't always hear about the cons. So the pros, and I'll, I'll give them to you very quickly, and if you want to watch the full video, youtube.com, the Duncan Duo, uh, slash the Duncan Duo, go to our YouTube channel, um, and, and you should see it there. Um, you can also catch it on any of our socials at the Duncan Duo. But pros of new construction, you're going to have um, lower utility costs, lower insurance, typically lower taxes because the first year a lot of times you're being um, you know taxed on land. You're going to be able to have some control over fixtures and features. Um, you're also going to have a property that someone has not lived in. Um, and you're going to have some warranty stuff to cover items that a resale property may not typically have. Some of the cons. And these get lost sometimes. People, um, you know, people naturally uh, focus a lot on new construction on the benefits, but there, but there are some negative aspects of buying new construction, and uh, I want to share a few of those. So the con of buying a new construction home: number one is you're in a community where the construction is going to keep going. You may be getting woke up on Saturday morning at seven a.m. with the beep, beep, beep. Uh, the roads may be dirty. You're going to have laborers all over the place. You're going to you're going to be dealing with the extra traffic, nuisance, dirtiness, materials, noises 
of living in a community that's under construction. Now, again, of course, if you buy a home uh, that that is in a resale community and the construction's already done, you could forego some of that. But buying in a new construction community, there is going to be some of that that nuisance aspect. The second part of it is that a lot of consumers believe that new construction homes are somehow different or better than resale. Uh, look, I promise you, people building new construction homes make just as many mistakes, uh, and and there's just as many things found in an inspection report as there are in resale property. Um, it is a man-made product. People may mess up. People cut corners. Uh, things get you know missed. So don't expect because you're buying a new construction home, there's going to be nothing wrong with it. Still need to get a home inspection. There still are some obstacles. Um, there are also um, the the other side of the uh, new construction coin. Um, like I mentioned before, everything being um, under construction. You've also got the, um, the the constant moving in of people. Um, you know, in addition to the construction, you're going to have moving trucks. You're going to have all of that happening. And, and not to say that doesn't happen in other neighborhoods, but if a new construction community just finished 24 homes, 24 people are going to be moving in. And there's going to, again, there's going to be some nuisance associated with that. So if you want more pros and cons about buying a new construction home versus a resale property, again, go to our YouTube channel or any of our socials at the Duncan Duo. And if you are thinking about selling your home, we give you all the options. We're, we're able to give you an instant cash offer. We're able to say, hey, look, if you don't want the cash offer, here's what happens if you sell your home traditionally. Here's what that looks like. Um, we're also able to take your property to investors. Um, so there, there are many paths that you can go when selling your home with us. And we're going to give you all the options uh, from as quick as we can buy it and close in a week to here's what a traditional sale looks like and everything in between. You can do all that at DuncanDuo.com. Get a quick home value at DuncanDuo.com. It'll keep you updated on what's going on and then allow you to choose your journey uh, from selling your home. Again, whether you want a value, whether you're thinking about selling traditionally or whether you want to sell it in an instant cash offer situation. Again, you can do that at DuncanDuo.com. So we'll be back. We're going to continue this conversation after a quick break here on WFLA News. Yak Neary. So we're back here on the Duncan Duo Show talking about the Tampa Bay real estate agent. Realtor Magazine posted an article this past week, What Real Estate Agents Wish Buyers Already Knew. And this is interesting because, you know, my show, obviously, the purpose of my show is to educate the audience, certainly to expose my business, but also to educate the audience about what is going on in real estate. And they polled real estate agents and they said, hey, what is it that you wish buyers knew about um, you know, buying a home. So here is that list. Um, uh, survey respondents say the top way to make a real estate transaction go more smoothly is to help buyers be more realistic about property prices. So here are the following aspects as key to a smooth home purchase for buyers. Be realistic about property prices. 49% of the survey respondents said that they wish buyers were realistic. So again, statistically, uh, the list to sell price ratio in Tampa Bay hovers around 97, 98%, meaning that homes are selling pretty close to average. Um, foreclosures aren't, aren't existing. Prices aren't dropping. The bottom is not falling out of our market. The idea that you're going to be able to get, get a mortgage and steal some type of property in today's real estate market just doesn't exist. Are there investors that have cash and can close quick and you know, are able to, you know, get good opportunities. Yes, but they're few and far between compared to where they were uh, in the past. And certainly we're not in a real estate market that's struggling. So uh, realistic about prices, they're not dropping. Like if you think they're dropping, like, you know, forget it. Like foreclosures aren't going to happen. The the banks and the hedge funds, everybody figured it out. 
They're not going to let homes go to foreclosure. They're simply going to do swaps. They're going to trade assets. They're going to sell stuff in bulk to hedge funds. They know if they take a property all the way to foreclosure, it's a new comp in a neighborhood. That new comp pro- drives down values, which then creates the domino effect of what we had back in the Great Recession. They learned their lesson. It isn't happening again. So keep. So if you're somebody sitting on the sidelines saying, oh, foreclosures are coming, they're not because they figured it out. It, before a property will ever go to foreclosure, it'll get sold to a hedge fund in a bulk deal. The hedge fund will eventually work the person out of the property, uh, maybe through some sort of deed in lieu. It'll never get reported as a foreclosure. It'll never get reported as that low sale. It's just not happening. Forbearance also, they allow people to just kick the can down the road. They learn their lessons in residential real estate. We're not seeing foreclosures again. Nothing like we saw before. Be communicative and responsive. Uh, so a lot of times buyers will say they love a house and they'll get spooked and they'll ghost the real estate agent and they'll not communicate or uh, there'll be a counter offer or something the, the buyer needs to respond to and they just don't understand the complexities of buying and selling process. This is where I think agents fail and it's because the barrier of entry for our industry is so low and there's so many people in it giving bad advice. Um, but uh, but buyers and sellers being educated about the process, understanding the current market, I think goes back to being realistic about prices, but maybe more timeline. So the, uh, the, the current market, and when I say the current market, I want you to understand that that doesn't mean like the market as a whole. It means that specific neighborhood and price point. Uh, real estate is hyper local. When you say the real estate market, it, it really it's kind of hard to you know, to to say the real estate market because it'd be like saying that the high degree the high temperature in Tampa today is seventy or the high temperature in the United States of America is seventy seven. It might be that in Tampa, but in New York it's probably cold. So it's why they're all moving here. Anyway, understanding the current market I think goes back to being realistic about prices, but it also I think relates to timelines, what you can expect to ask for what it might take to get a house you know, under contract, what a timeline is, all of those things. And then be transparent about financial capabilities. This is an interesting one. My mortgage friends can appreciate this. Um, I cannot tell you how many times people have called and said, oh yeah, my credit's great. I make six figures. I have a great job. Um, and, and it's a lie. Their credit is bad. They've got issues. They've got you know, they've got stuff on their credit. They are self-employed. Their income isn't as high. They write off a bunch of stuff. So their financial capabilities are not what they think. And then they get bad advice because they try and prop themselves up to be in a different financial position than they are, get themselves in over the head. So uh, be transparent about your financial capabilities to your real estate agent so they don't give you bad advice and also so they don't waste their time. You know, you you have to understand that real estate agents don't don't get a salary. They don't get they don't get paid to show you houses. They only get paid if you actually close. If if you can't if you can't actually buy a house, and you don't actually intend on buying a house, and you're having a real estate agent show you around, it's a real it's it's selfish. You're you're taking them away from their family and for other opportunities to earn. If you're not going to actually transact with them or have the capability of transacting with them, then um, you know just. Just go to an app, look online. Don't don't waste their time. So if you don't have the capability of buying and you haven't gone through the steps to confirm that you're financially viable to be able to buy at home, then then don't waste people's time. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that that do just that. So um, so those are some things. Obviously, real estate agents need to educate consumers about that. Um, but but when it comes to being realistic about price, I promise you, a lot of times we have. Uh, thousands and thousands of real estate transactions. We're giving the client the advice, but you know, with they think they know better because they saw TikTok. So um, again, the, those are the things that people that real estate agents wish consumers were more prepared on and more knowledgeable about. We're going to continue the conversation about the Tampa Bay real estate market after a quick break when we aren't on air again at the Duncan Duo. And if you want the best website for getting your home value, no matter where in the country you are. Okay, DuncanDuo.com with this new tool we use. If you own property anywhere in the country, we can keep you updated on what's going on with your value. It blends all the different services out there and adds the human element where we can actually talk to you, learn about features and upgrades and make adjustments. And you get a dashboard so you get to see everything that's going on in your market, all the comps, all the sales in a very user-friendly environment. Again, you can do that at DuncanDuo.com. And we'll be back after a quick break here on the Duncan Duo Real Estate Show.
So we're back here on the Duncan Duo Show talking about the Tampa Bay real estate market when we aren't on air at the Duncan Duo, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, pretty much all of them at the Duncan Duo. What is an assumable mortgage? We get this question a lot, and, and what I want to explain is that this is a rarity, okay? A rare circumstance. If you're a consumer and you think that there are gobs and gobs of homes out there with assumable mortgage at great interest rates, I, I want to make it clear to you that this is a rarity. It is not the norm, okay? But I want to tell you what it is so that you can understand. An assumable mortgage is a type of home loan where the buyer takes over the seller's loan instead of applying for a new loan, okay? Now, it's common in FHA and VA loans. It's rare in other circumstances, but it allows the buyer, and and again, where it makes sense is let's say somebody bought a house a few years ago and they've got a 3% interest rate, okay? And they go to sell their house and they've got an assumable mortgage. That property is more marketable because the person buying it can assume the 3% mortgage where rates today are 7%. Okay. Now, here's the caveat to it. You have to be able to qualify, number one. Number two, you typically, not always, but typically have to make up the difference in cash. You may be able to subsidize with a second mortgage or a line of credit, uh, but but for the most part, prepare that the difference between, you know, the the uh the prior mortgage that you're gonna assume and the new purchase price it's more than likely going to be need to be cash. So it's a longer process than typical closing because banks aren't used to doing them. But it is common in VA and FHA mortgages, but it's rare for those deals to work out. We get consumers all the time saying, hey, I want an assumable mortgage. We can certainly search for it, okay? But again, the, the, the reality is if someone has a 3% mortgage and they bought a few years ago, it's likely they have a substantial amount of equity. For you to be able to qualify you either need cash to make up the difference or you get a second or, or mortgage that's at a much higher rate than a, a, you know than a regular mortgage and the blended rate ends up being not as good. So again, are there circumstances where it can make sense? Yes. But an assumable mortgage again allows a new buyer to take over the seller's mortgage and assume it and and accept responsibility for it. Now a few caveats to it. Um, if it's an FHA mortgage, this doesn't apply. If it's a VA mortgage, let's say someone has a 200000 assumable VA mortgage and you're going to assume it as the seller and then you take on that mortgage. You, you just have to qualify. You don't actually have to be a veteran in this assumption. You, you, can, you can assume a VA mortgage and not be a veteran. However, the veteran loses that $200,000 until you refinance or pay off in terms of its ability to qualify for a VA. Now, that doesn't mean they can't go out and get a VA loan. It just means that their buying power or the amount that they could qualify for with their current situation is reduced by the amount of that. There are plenty of people that have more than one VA loan. So let's just say that they could qualify for 600,000 in VA mortgages and they've got a 200 that you're going to assume now they're now they can get 400 from VA. So so that's kind of the caveat to it with um with the assumables are there circumstances where it makes sense? Yes, very very rare. Um not a common thing, but that is what an assumable mortgage is. It allows someone to uh, pay the difference in cash or get financing and pay the difference and assume the seller's mortgage as part of a purchase. Now, I want to preface this because the banks, you know, kind of reminds me of dealing with short sales back in the day when the short sales first started happening back in the Great Recession. The banks were not prepared, did not know how to handle them, and they were you know, kind of a nightmare to deal with. Assumable mortgages aren't as bad, but the banks really don't know how to handle them. They're, they're, they're divisions and they're used to, you know, bringing in money and giving out money. They're not used to like deploying uh, these, these non-traditional methods. So it's, it's a little bit of a hoop to jump through. Can it be done? Yes. Um, is it smooth? No. Is it quick? No. Um, but, but those are kind of the, the norms when it comes to dealing with an assumable mortgage. And it also, as a seller, it's one thing, if you know that you have an FHA or a VA loan and you can confirm that it's assumable and you have a low rate, it does make your property more marketable to where you might be able to get a little bit more value out of your house if someone can, um, you know, can assume it at a lower rate. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Again, when we aren't on air, make sure to follow us at The Duncan Duo, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, all of them at 
the Duncan duo. I want to talk about the luxury real estate market. I, I, I mentioned in the first segment about how the luxury real estate agent is the most envied profession. And I think a lot of it is because the perception of what a luxury real estate agent has been, uh, you know, kind of a myth from what reality TV shows. But the luxury real estate market in Tampa Bay is still extremely healthy. Um, you know, we, we've we been crushing it lately. We had a bidding war on a $2.8 million condo. We got a bidding war on a $2 million estate in Lakeland. Uh, we just put a property under contract on the water on Treasure Island. We've got an off-market uh, $2.2 million uh, Clearwater land development opportunity on the, uh, really close to the beach. So we've been doing really well, putting a lot of properties in the luxury space under under contract. But I'm also seeing a lot of mistakes. There are a lot of real estate agents that got into the business the last few years that are putting luxury homes on the market that aren't great negotiators or marketers. And w- w- what ends up happening is maybe that real estate agent has done a lot of business. So somebody says, okay, maybe I'll give them a shot. But selling luxury and negotiation on that side of things is completely different than a traditional real estate agent. Just because a real estate agent's done some deals or been in the industry a little while doesn't mean they have the experience to navigate through the uh, non-traditional path that a lot of luxury sales happen, as well as dealing with you know, the consumers and, and sometimes the, the type A personalities and the ego and navigating through all of that to get to a successful closing can be an obstacle. And it's, it's, we have a dedicated team of people. So I have 50 people on my team. There's only a handful of them that are qualified to work with clients that are you know, buying and selling you know, above a million dollars. And they, those are the best of the best that have lots of experience in that, in that price range that have, bought, that have helped buyers and sellers sell homes above a million dollars, a lot of them. And, um, you know, I personally assist some of our clients with that. So if you have a luxury property to sell, hasn't sold, or you talk to some agents and you don't quite think that they have the track record, make sure you look at the track record, pull up their, find a way to pull up their stats. Um, it's out there. Look and see how many homes above a million dollars they've sold. Uh, not long ago, I had somebody say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about going with this agent. And I, I showed the client, I said, this agent has never sold a home above a million dollars, like ever. Like they make cool videos on social media, but they've never sold a home above a million dollars. It is a completely different path to success, completely different marketing strategy. The marketing reach that you have to have can't just be local. You've got to expose the property outside of the country. So selling your luxury property has never been more challenging because there are so many real estate agents and there is so much noise and so many of them that really don't know what they're doing. So make sure it, you have an agent that is experienced at it. If you do reach out to us at DuncanDuo.com to sell your luxury property, I promise you you're going to get an agent that is experienced in luxury, that has sold homes above a million dollars, that has a track record, that knows how to negotiate, that knows how to navigate the nuances of marketing a high-end property, not just locally but nationally and internationally, and knows how to use video, knows how to use high-end photography, knows how to – you know, is successful and wealthy and knows how to talk to the successful and wealthy. So if um, if that is up your alley and you're thinking about selling or buying uh, something on the high end, you can hit us up at DuncanDuo.com. Again, that is DuncanDuo.com. I want to talk next about uh, the seasonality of real estate because it's kind of a myth uh, in Tampa Bay. So we get people all the time moving here from up north Plenty of my friends want me to put out on the air that Florida is closed. Please stop moving here. We're getting too congested. The traffic is, you know, this and that. I'm not going to say that, but we've got a lot of people that have moved here from northern and cold climates. And when they move here from northern or cold climates, they sometimes have this assumption that they try and translate into the Tampa Bay real estate market about seasonality. Oh, we're not going to put it on the market in the winter. I don't know about you, but it didn't snow this year. In Tampa, we didn't get any freezes. Okay, like we don't have the seasonality that you have in these northern states where the real estate market slows because of the weather. Because people don't want to go out in a snowstorm, people don't want to go out and it's freezing and look at houses, so they wait to sell until the spring and summer. We just don't have that same. It's a myth. The only reason we might have some of that is because people have this myth in their mind that really doesn't translate to Tampa. Our real estate market, the only seasonality slowdown we really get is kind of January, February are a little slow because those are sales during the holidays. 
The holidays are not because our slow our slight slowdown during those months is not because of the weather. It's because people are off on vacation. They're taking time with their family. They're out of town on for Christmas. They're you know so our we don't have the seasonality the spring, fall, summer, winter. We just don't have the seasons the same way in other parts of the country. So we see very slight seasonality. So if you're someone that says, "Oh, it's it's you know May." Um, you know, I'm going to put my house in the market. I don't want to put it on the market in October. I'm going to wait until the spring. That just doesn't make sense here. And in fact, just about every year, one of the best months of the year is December. So you have people that will, starting in October, will say, oh, I'm going to wait till the spring. That is a huge mistake here. Uh, you can sell your property any any month of the year here. The seasonality curve is not the same as it is in other uh, parts of the country. We have a little bit of it. But again, it's not climate driven. It's not weather driven. It's it's really a seasonality around uh, you know the holidays with a little bit of slowdown that brings closings in January, February down a little bit. Outside of that, it seems like the last five years, it's a different month every year that's the best month of the year. So uh, trying to predict which month that's going to be is pretty much impossible. Some of it's driven on rates. Some of it's driven around you know whether we have storms or bad weather. Um, but but nonetheless. We don't have these huge fluctuations. You know, I talked to somebody the other day and they're like, well, you know, do people really want to look at houses in the summer? It's so hot. <laughs> they're retired, right? So to them, it's really hot. But that's when families have the ability to travel down here and look at properties. That's when kids are out of school. Of course, people are buying and selling in the summers. Take take away whatever perception you have and talk to a professional real estate agent that looks at the data and can tell you that, that whatever – thought you have, if it's not data driven, it's probably wrong if you're comparing it to any real estate market you've lived in other than Tampa Bay. So hopefully that's been helpful. Again, go to DuncanDuo.com for your free home value estimate or get an instant cash offer again at DuncanDuo.com. You, it's a very easy form to fill out. You get a dashboard. We can personally update what's going on in the marketplace with your property. We can update your features and keep you updated on all the comps in the neighborhood in a very user-friendly fashion. And again, you can do that at DuncanDuo.com. I'm going to be wrap, wrapping up the last segment here on Cinco de Mayo. It is Cinco de Mayo today, and hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, I know I'm going to be enjoying it. I'm going to I'm going to indulge in lots of festivities a little bit later today, uh, and we'll be back after a quick break here on the Duncan Duo Show. So we're back here on the Duncan Duo Show, wrapping up with our last segment. Get your home value estimate at DuncanDuo.com. Get an instant cash offer at DuncanDuo.com. I flip a lot of real estate. I buy a lot of homes. We bring a lot of investors to the table. Again, get a cash offer at DuncanDuo.com. So four beloved mortgage rules that home buyers might want to consider breaking right now. The first one is you should get only a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Now, historically, you'll hear a lot of financial coaches say a fixed rate mortgage is what you should get because you're safe and you're not going to have these huge fluctuations. However, most people predict that interest rates are at a peak and they're going to come down at some point in the future. They're going to hover around where they're at. They may bump up a little bit, but we're going to see some reprieve. Most economists are predicting that reprieve. So, um, there are a lot of people saying that the 30-year fixed mortgage rate is a bad idea, that you should look at an, an, an adjustable rate mortgage for five years, or you should look at a 2-1 buy-down, where you get the seller to pay closing costs and buy your rate down for a couple of years, again, to give you time to refinance. So again, is the 30-year traditional mortgage, fixed mortgage, the safest thing? Yes, but it might also be the most expensive right now. So weigh 
the pros and cons of getting a 30-year mortgage compared to an adjustable rate mortgage or getting the seller to buy down your rate. Um, another uh, rule, you should have 20% down payment, okay? Um, there are plenty of opportunities out there for you to buy with lower down payment. There are plenty of opportunities for you to earn more money on your money. Um, and there are plenty of opportunities for you to get, again, those lower down payment mortgages. So you do not have to have 20% down. Um, again, is it safer? Yes, um, it is safer. However, if you're trying to save 20% down and you're going to wait, let's just say it's going to take you two years to save 20% to, to get down, you are going to lose so much equity opportunity because in that time frame over the next few years, if we expect prices to average 5 to 7% appreciation, our average sell price around the 450 range, you could be dealing with a $510,000 house before you saved your 20000 you lost 40 grand. So saving for a 20% down payment may not be the path to go in an appreciating market um, where you can still qualify for lower or no money down. Um, another one, don't ask sellers to pay closing costs. That was a couple years ago during COVID. A couple years ago during COVID, man, the sellers would get whatever they want. We're still a seller's market. It's still We're still seeing bidding wars in certain price ranges. I mean, we, we had two bidding wars recently on homes above $2 million, So it, it still happens. Not as common, though. And it's also a lot more common for sellers to pay closing costs. So if you're a buyer, don't be afraid to ask for closing cost concessions. Uh, in today's real estate market, it's much more common. Back in COVID peak, we were seeing 103% list to sell price ratio. Today, we're seeing 98%. And a lot more sellers are agreeing to pay closing costs. So your likelihood of, you know, and again, trust your real estate agent especially if they're with the Duncan Duo, they're going to give you the right advice. Every neighborhood's different. Some neighborhoods, you may not be able to get closing costs. Some neighborhoods, it may be a bidding war. Some neighborhoods are still really hot. However, you're more likely to get closing costs covered by the seller in a negotiation today than you were a couple of years ago. Don't pay points to buy down interest rates. And so this was something um, a couple of years ago, it didn't make sense to do. Today, it can make some sense to buy down your rate. OK, again, is it right for everyone? No, but there are plenty of circumstances where a 2-1 buy down may give you the reprieve and the lower payment for a couple of years until you go to refinance and hopefully rates are down in a couple of years. Now, look, there's a chance they may not be. There's always that risk. A lot of economists and mortgage people are predicting within the next couple of years, we will see a drop in rates to, down to a, to a number that people will be able to write, refinance. Now, are we going to see rates drop down to twos again? No, but could they get to five? Possibly. You know, and if they do, then you'd have the opportunity to refinance. And a lot of lenders are doing a a program where they'll give you a free refinance if you do it within a certain period of time. So, um, not paying points down on interest rates isn't necessarily what the best advice is today in today's current rate environment and real estate market. So, hopefully, this has been helpful for you. Uh, we we talk on the show every week. We also educate real estate agents buyers and sellers on all of our social channels at the Duncan duo. So make sure you're following us. And if you are a real estate agent, look, I want to explain to you, this market is challenging. However, there are plenty of people out there thriving and kicking butt like they are on my team right now. If you're interested in, you know, joining a team, 20 year track record that has a long list of accolades that knows how to adapt, that has been through the worst of the worst real estate markets, that knows how to still grow despite the market and pivot, still continues to mass advertise and create uh, thousands of leads every single month, go to jointheduo.com. Again, that's jointheduo.com. And if you're a real estate agent listening and you don't want to join a team, but you're kind of curious about LPT, wouldn't you like to learn from me with my business what made me make the switch? You can set up a private consultation with me at jointheduo.com or doovermovement.com where I will jump on the phone and tell you what opened my eyes and had me leave Remax after 13 years to jump over to LPT and look at what they have to offer. And it isn't just what they have to offer for me, but what they have to offer for consumers, for my clients, and what they have to offer for my agents. So again, you can do that at jointheduo.com or doovermovement.com. Would love the opportunity to talk to you about a real estate career with LPT or with the Duncan Duo team. Either one, we have a path. Whether you want to be an independent agent or whether you want to join our team, again, you can hit us up at jointheduo.com. And we hope you have an awesome rest of your Cinco de Mayo Sunday. Have a great 
Rest your weekend, Tampa Bay. Thanks for tuning in.